Hi guys, so I want to further dive deeper into Dr. Huberman's podcast regarding hair growth and the different factors for hair growth. We're going to be talking about increased blood flow to the scalp and uh, PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Okay, so we're really focusing right now on treatments that relate to the critical requirement for hair stem cells to receive blood flow in order to receive oxygen and nutrients to get the hair to grow. And that's really what minoxidil is about. So that's true. So minoxidil, which has been around for many years, the idea behind it is that it increases the vascular channels and, and allows more blood flow to reach the hair follicles, more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients. Some of the mechanisms are not completely well understood regarding minoxidil, but that's the idea behind it. It's also what all of those anecdotes you hear are all about like massaging the scalp or putting red light on the scalp. Although red light might do some other things in general, heating or lighting of the scalp or massaging of the scalp is really designed to increase blood flow to the scalp. Now, the reason minoxidil works at all is because it is going to increase blood flow around the clock. And that's because people are taking it topically and it's seeping into the general circulation or at least as stings somewhat restricted to the hair cell niche or they're taking it orally and it makes it to that hair cell niche uh, below the follicle. So that's true. So minoxidil applied topically, it has to get into your scalp. So sometimes the liquid solution form, which is base and propylene glycol, can penetrate into the scalp better than the foam can and provides uh, a better effect uh, and better results from it. Uh, there's also now oral minoxidil, which also helps to do the same thing. Uh, there may be some slightly higher incidence of side effects with the oral minoxidil, and the oral is technically off-label. However, it can be effective, but also the minoxidil, the active metabolites need to get into your body and into your scalp to be able to have these effects. Massaging your scalp uh, may have a short impact on increase in blood flow. I personally have not seen massaging your scalp have any effect on hair growth. When we massage our scalp, however, that's a transient thing. You know, I can massage my scalp right now. I'm no doubt um, increasing blood flow to certain areas. I'm probably decreasing blood flow to the areas I'm pushing down on, but it's all temporary. I don't know many people that can massage their scalp enough during the day or long enough during the day, rather, that it would sufficiently increase blood flow. With that said, it is clear that increasing blood flow to the scalp by way of reducing hypertension, which is effectively accomplished by broadening, by expanding the blood vessels and capillaries, is an effective way to at least hold on to the hair that you have. Is it going to completely halt hair loss if you have a strong genetic bias towards hair loss? No. Is it going to reverse hair loss? Very unlikely that it will, but it can slow hair loss or even maintain the hair that you have. So if we were to take a step back and ask ourselves what other sorts of drug treatments are out there besides minoxidil that increase blood flow and that might increase the rates of hair growth or more likely increase maintenance of hair that one already has by increasing blood flow to the niche. And nowadays there are more and more doctors who are familiar with this requirement for blood flow, understand the mechanisms by which minoxidil works and understand the vast desire out there for people to hold on to the hair they have and regrow hair. And they're prescribing things like low dose Tadalafil. So 2.5 milligram to five milligram Tadalafil. Tadalafil was initially discovered as a drug to treat prostate health. So minoxidil, yes, it can be effective. I tell my patients that it can be effective to help to stabilize their hair to decrease the rate of thinning hair, to stabilize, to keep them at that level of hair thinning, at least for a period of time. But also for patients, it may help to reverse some of the thinning and help to thicken their hair as well. So there are advantages of using minoxidil. Now, uh, what Dr. Huberman describes for Tadalafil uh, may work as well. I have not prescribed to Dalafil for any of my patients for treating hair loss. The critical requirement for blood flow, oxygen, and nutrients to the stem cell niche is also why you hear a lot nowadays about the use of PRP, platelet-rich plasma, for trying to offset hair loss or even reverse hair loss. We're going to do an entire episode about PRP. It is pretty controversial in certain circles and well accepted in other circles. 
a couple of key things to understand about PRP. First of all, it is being used in multiple tissues for different purposes in different clinics. So for instance, board certified physicians in the United States, Canada, and Europe are doing PRP injections into ovaries to try and expand the number of healthy follicles and eggs so that people can conceive later in life or even earlier in life if they don't have many follicles. People are getting PRP injections into their joints in order to try and support joint health. People are getting PRP injections into just about every tissue you can think of. However, PRP, despite what you may have heard, is not stem cells. Somebody tells you they're injecting stem cells, they're either outside the US, Canada, or Northern Europe, or they're injecting something else. So you wanna uh, really look into that. So I completely agree with, with his statement regarding stem cells and PRP. PRP is platelet-rich plasma. It has specific growth factors which are housed within your platelets, which are released, and those are the growth factors that can help to uh, stabilize and help to thicken your hair. Stem cells is not something that's currently available. It's not something that is utilized, and there's really, it, it's not something available at this point. So it's different, but stem cells is not something that should be or could be utilized for hair growth at this point in time in the United States. For those of you that are interested in using microneedling or microneedling in combination with chemical treatments like minoxidil or some of the other treatments we'll talk about in a little bit, like finasteride and caffeine. Yes, believe it or not, caffeine is being used to regrow hair. Very interesting, get into that in a moment. But if you're interested in using microneedling alone or in combination with some of these other treatments, there's a wonderful review that was just published this last year. Wonderful because it's very comprehensive. Not so wonderful, not to the fault of the authors because most of the studies out there on microneedling are not superb. There are ways of gauging the strength of a study, mainly related to their duration, whether or not there were control groups, et cetera. But the review itself is excellent. And the title of the review is Microneedling and its Use in Hair Loss Disorders, a systematic review. We will provide a link to this in the show note captions. And this review did a very good job of highlighting both the strengths and drawbacks of the various studies looking at microneedling. It also explored the use of microneedling in both men and women and of various ages. And it does appear to be the case that microneedling shows some positive benefit in both men and women, regardless of age, especially when used in combination with the various other treatments that we're talking about. I was also able to glean from this review and some of the papers described within it, that needle lengths of about one millimeter to 2.5 millimeters seem to be more effective than shorter needle lengths. So if you're scared of the needles and the needle lengths, keep in mind that done properly, microneedling shouldn't be too painful. Some people experience a little bit more pain than others, but it's not considered a very painful procedure. It is, however, a procedure that can cause some bleeding of the scalp, and that bleeding of the scalp can be very apparent, especially if it's in the front of the head as opposed to in the top of the head and hidden by some hair, or if you're already uh, quite bald in a given region. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I suppose one could wear a hat or a wig or something of that sort if they were really self-conscious about it. But the microneedling itself is causing a physical disruption to the scalp, some degree of bleeding, inflammation. And again, all of that is part of the process by which microneedling can actually improve hair growth. And of course, there's healing that occurs of the bleeding and the damage to the follicle. This is a transient thing, but understanding the cosmetic implications in the short term, as well as in the long term, is certainly worth knowing. So microneedling is the idea behind using these very small needles to traumatize your scalp. So it's micro trauma. And by doing that, it's potentially releasing your natural uh, healing cascade and healing growth factors. And those growth factors may help to work on your dermal papilla cells in your hair follicle to help to increase the antigen or the growth phase of the hair cycle to help to thicken your hair. Now, I haven't seen personally very good results with just microneedling as the treatment for hair loss, but that's the idea behind it. And that's what some people speak about. One thing that's very clear is that the combination of microneedling and minoxidil treatment together is far more effective than either of those treatments alone. In addition, the combination of microneedling and minoxidil has been shown to be effective in recovering what are called dead zones. So these are regions of the scalp that are either completely bald or mostly bald for which there is essentially no stem cell population there. And the combination of minoxidil 
plus microneedling is somehow able to recover those stem cell populations and allow new hair to grow. Although the growth of that hair in those dead zone regions can take a very long time, 30 to even 50 weeks. Neither minoxidil treatment alone nor microneedling alone has been shown to be effective in recovering these so-called dead zones when those treatments are done separately. These so-called dead zones where there's very little hair growth, I'm not so sure that any treatment is going to bring back hair where most of the hair is gone. The idea behind it is to hold on to what you have. You can help to thicken the hair as well. Uh, but you know, we just have to have realistic expectations of what these treatments can do. So this, I would say, is a strong reason to consider combining microneedling and minoxidil as opposed to just doing minoxidil or just microneedling. I should also mention that Minoxidil treatment, if you pursue it, is likely something that you are going to have to do for the rest of your life if you want to hold on to the hair growth that you obtain with minoxidil or if you want to maintain the hair that you are already maintaining with minoxidil. And that's true with any medical treatments for hair loss, whether it's finasteride, minoxidil, PRP. Uh, you have to stay on these medical treatments to maintain the benefits of them. So it's not something you could just use it for a short period of time and come off. You have to stay on the medical treatments. So the final thought on this segment of the Huberman podcast is that yes, minoxidil can help. There's topical minoxidil, there's oral minoxidil. A recent study has shown that they can have similar efficacy. The oral minoxidil may be a little bit more tolerant for patients to be able to take a pill every day versus using a solution which is, you know, can be a little bit messy. However, the oral minoxidil may have some slightly higher risk of side effects and the oral minoxidil is off label. So that is something to consider, but minoxidil can be beneficial. It looks to increase the blood flow and the nutrient inflow to your hair follicles. That's part of the process. Some of the process is also not completely understood, but it can increase the antigen of the growth phase of the hair cycle. PRP or platelet-rich plasma that is injecting a concentrate of your platelets, which have growth factors that can also help to stabilize and help to increase your thickening of your hair. And that's different from what stem cells are. Stem cell therapy is not something that's utilized at this point, and PRP is, and PRP is shown to be safe, and it can be effective as well. So that's something to keep in mind. But any of these medical treatments, as long as they're helping you, have to be maintained to maintain the benefits over time.